All right, this is chapter one, section five, called Equations. This is for IM1, or Integrated Math 1. Uh, so this is the screen you will see as a student, with the exception of you don't see a due date here because I'm on the teacher preview. So it doesn't give me a due date, but it will give you one. You will always see attempts, and this is my first attempt of unlimited, meaning I can come in here and try this as many times as I would like. Um, there is no limit on the attempts. This tells me how many questions there are in my assignment. So this one has six questions. It's anywhere from one to 10 questions. Grading policy is always the best score, meaning that um, whatever attempt was your best one is the one you get to keep. And partial credit means, you know, if I answer one of the six questions, I get credit for the one question. I don't have to answer all six to get full, to get my credit. Um, this little warning here is just always remember to finish your assignment. And it doesn't actually mean finish. What it means is in the bottom right corner, you always click Submit Assignment. Whether or not you have answered all questions, you always click Submit Assignment. Because otherwise, it's going to lock you out of every other assignment, and it's going to make you come back to this one. So clicking Submit Assignment doesn't change anything. It doesn't actually finish the whole thing. Remember, you have unlimited retakes. So you can come back in and take it as many times as you would like. But you don't want to lock yourself out of everything else either. So make sure you click that button. You won't see it on my screen because, again, the teacher preview doesn't show that. I don't actually submit it on my side. All right, so you always see the number of questions at the top here, your question in the middle, any tools that you're going to use right here. And then on the side, you always have these three buttons. You might also have a calculator, depending on the question. Um, so explanation will tell you you're going to lose your current question attempt because it's going to show you how to do this exact problem, not an example, this problem in particular. So it's a very cool resource, but they're not gonna give you the answer and then say, okay, now go type in your answer. They're not gonna give it to you like that. But they're gonna show you how to do this problem if you're stuck on this particular problem, and then you can come back and try another one. So if you click okay, you'll get a little red X and you'll just have to come in on another attempt. You can click example, and that will literally show you just a general example of this type of problem. So they show it to you exactly the way you have it there, and then they show you how they want you to go through and solve it. So in this one, they give us an, an equation, and then they give us a bunch of W's. So if W is 92, is this a solution, yes or no? Well, what do we do here? So if they're asking me, is 92 a solution, what they want me to do is instead of W, they want me to plug in 92. And when I add 43 and 92 on the right side, do I get 140, or sorry, 49? No, I get 135. So that's not true. I did not get the correct number, so I would click no, because it's false. So I'm going down and I'm looking for the, the, the W, which value of W will get me a true statement. So in this case, it's 6. If I plug 6 in for W and I add that to 43, I do get 49. So both the left and the right side of the equation equal each other. So this is true. It's a yes. So that's what we're doing on this guy. We're just going to go through and, and figure it out. Um, and a little hint, you should only have one solution on these ones. You should not get a yes more than once. So if you get yes more than once, go back and check your work. I wouldn't just stop checking my work, I would and make sure that they're all no's so I didn't accidentally, you know, click yes on one that's not really a yes. So just be careful about that. But if I want another example, if I click here again, it'll give me a brand new example. So I can keep clicking example and keep seeing new, new examples of the same type of problem. You could also message your teacher here and it'll attach this problem to the message. So we know where to go help you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. That was a my three minute tutorial there. Um, so for each value of W, determine whether it is a solution to W minus 30 to 36 equals 12. So we have, oops, I hope if I had my pen on, W minus 36 equals 12. So now I have all these values of W. So we're gonna start with the first one here, 65. So if I plug in instead of W, and I'll make this blue, I'm gonna plug in 65. And I'm going to say 65 minus 36. Do I get 12? And I know right away that's going to be much bigger than 12. Um, but if you didn't, you know, if you couldn't picture that, you could always write it off to the side or you could use a calculator if you want to. You know, you're going to have to borrow on this one if you do it this way. But this is going to be 9 and this is going to be 2. So 29 does not equal 12. This is definitely false. So this is going to be a no. All right, if I go to my next one, Remember, we're plugging in the next number for W, so 45 minus 36 equals 12. I'm not changing minus 36 equals 12. I'm only replacing the W. So now, 45 minus 36, well, 
this is definitely not um, going to be 12. This is a little too small. And I can kind of see that right away just because I can, um, I can tell this is only going to be 9 more. And I know because it, I, I'm going from 5 to 6 and it's going down not fully by 10. It's going down by only 9. So 9 does not equal 12. So again, nope, that doesn't work. Now if I go 52 minus 36, because that's my next number, 52 minus 36 equals 12. Well, that's going to be also a little bit too big. We only want it a little bit bigger than 45, really. So this is a little bit too big. But if I went, you know, off to the side and I subtracted it like this, and I'd have 4 and 12, I'd have 6 and 1. So this is 16 equals 12. So that's not too far off, but still not equal. So I click no again. So now I have 48 minus 36 equals 12. So now if I set this up and I did 48 minus 36, I get 8 minus 6 is 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. Oh, now I do have 12 equals 12. Yay, that is true. 12 does equal 12. So here's my yes. So it's just asking you to go through each piece and say if you plug in this number, do you in fact get both sides to equal each other? And one side should be just a constant and the other side should have a variable with um, an operation in there for you to do. I believe it's gonna be addition subtraction for right now, but it could be multiplication or division. Um, so, all right, let's go to the next guy here. Doo, 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 doo. And we have same exact idea. Here's my multiplication. So I think number one is always going to be addition or subtraction. And number two in this one is going to be your multiplication or division problem. So we have 27, and I'm going to flip it over to red for whatever reason. So now we're going to be plugging in for x here. And we want to plug it in on this side. Remember, this is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the number that it's asking me to multiply, and do I get 27? So 3 times 3. And here, I'm even going to write this out a little bit different. So I'm going to... Three, why didn't it change to blue? Equals 27. And then three times something equals 27. So I'm just setting up a few of these really quick so I can really quickly move forward with my red. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in three for my first one. So here's three. Three times three equals 27. Well, three times three is nine, so that does not equal 27. So this is no. Three times nine, because that's what they're asking me to plug in next. Well, 3 times 9, ooh, that is 27. So check. That is true. The next one is 3 times 11, because, again, that's what they're asking me to plug in. Well, 3 times 11 is 33, so that is not 27. So I'd go no. And then 3 times 10 for the last one there. So 3 times 10 is 30, and that does not equal 27. So, again, I'm only getting one yes. Can you get all no's? Yep, you can. I've seen it happen. So just because you're getting all no's does not mean you've done it wrong. You can always check, and it'll give you three chances to, tr to try this problem out, too. It's not just going to go, nope, you got it wrong, and move you on. It's going to say, well, that was wrong. Try again. So it'll give you a chance to kind of go back and, and um, attempt the problem again. And it's not a new problem. It's the exact same problem when you're going through your attempts. So after your third attempt, that's when it actually marks you wrong and says, okay, now you're going to need to come in on a new attempt and try this again. It'll, it'll show you the answer to the problem as well. So it's going to say, mm, all right, we've gotten this wrong enough times. Let's move on. All right, so now we have this equation here, and we're going to replace x. So we're getting a little bit more complicated here. Now we have two operations. We're dividing by 7, and we're subtracting 4. So we're, we're definitely getting a little bit more complicated here. So now if I have my pieces here like this, and I'm going to go like this. So now they're asking me, again, I'm just going to plug these numbers in. 56. All right, well, negative 56 divided by 7. If you don't know your times tables, I would definitely suggest you playing on quick tables on here. If you go to the, the menu options in the top left corner, those three lines, you can go down and click on quick tables. And we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. It's literally just practicing, practicing your math facts, just like we kind of did back in elementary school. The faster you know these the easier it's going to be when we start to get more complicated on our math operations here. So anyway, this is going to be negative 8 minus 4 equals negative 7. So remember, if we're thinking of a number line, here's my 0, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4. 
This is my positive direction. This is my negative direction. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, we started with eight, not four. So negative eight. And I'm going to take four more away. I'm going to go negative four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And I'm going to end negative 12. So negative 12 does not equal negative seven. So this is a no. All right, let's go back. We're going to take a step back here. Unless I change my size there, it's going to erase a whole bunch of stuff. Let's see, can I just get that? All right, good enough. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in 70. 70 divided by 7, well, that's 10. Minus 4 equals negative 7. Well, 10 minus 4 is 6, so that does not equal 7, negative 7. So that's also a no. All right, I should be able to just undo these guys because that one wasn't too crazy. So now I'm going to plug in negative 21, because again, that's the next number it's telling me to plug in. So negative 21 divided by 7, I have negative 3. 21 divided by 7 is 3, but I have a negative divided by positive, so negative. Minus 4 equals negative 7. Again, I'm going to go to my number line, because this one does tend to confuse students when we have two negatives. I have 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And I want to go more negative. I'm going to take four away. So I'm going to go in this direction toward the negative. One, two, three, four. So that would be negative seven. <gasps> negative seven does equal negative seven. Yay, we found our yes there. All right. I'm going to try one more of these guys. So we have 35. So 35 divided by seven is going to be five again. Math facts, if you didn't know that right off the top of your head, you should definitely practice on quick tables. 5 minus 1, or sorry, 5 minus 4 is 1 equals negative 7. Well, nope, that's not true either, so no. So again, there should only be one number that you can plug in here that can possibly be the correct answer in this case when we only have a variable with no squares. Okay, so we, don't, we shouldn't be finding more than one yes. We definitely should only have one answer to these guys. All right, I believe we're going to start solving these without the tables. Maybe. Okay, so now they're giving us a different kind of table. So now they're saying fill in the table using this function rule. So a function rule is just an equation. It, 29 minus 4x, that's my rule. So I'm going to do this, these operations to x each time for this function. You can kind of think of it as like a machine. This is what happens to the x every time I put it in. So I have y equals 29 minus 4. And we'll do x in red here just so that we know. So they're telling you what to plug in. We're not testing to see if they're equal. So we're not going to click yes or no. We're, we're still going to plug in our, our numbers that they're giving us. But now we're going to get an answer from it. So 29 minus 4 times the first number they're asking me to plug in is 1. So... In this case, I have y equals 29 minus 4 times 1 is 4. So y equals 29, that's a 9, minus 4 is 25. So I come over here and I type in 25. When I plug in 1, I get 25 out. This is an input and an output. So when I input 1, and for my x, the output or the result is 25. So I'm going to do the same thing for my next number here. We have y equals 29 minus 4. That part of the equation stays the same. What's changing is the x value. Now I'm going to input 3. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to solve this. So we have y equals 29. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And we have 29 minus 12. So for this one, I can subtract kind of sideways here. 9 minus 2 is 7. 2 minus 1 is 1. So when I input 3, I get 17. All right, so I'm going to kind of come back up here and take this space, see if I can steal these so I don't have to rewrite all of that. All right, so now the, the next number they're asking me to put in is 4. So y equals 29 minus 4 times 4 is 16. So y is, and again, if I go sideways here, 9 minus 6 gives me 3, 2 minus 1 gives me 1, so I get 13. So if I put in 4, I get 13. All right, last one here. 
they're asking me to put in 5. So y equals 29 minus 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm going to subtract again. If I go sideways here, 9 minus 0, well, that's just 9. 2 minus 2 is 0, so I don't have to put a 0 on the front. I can just say it equals 9 there. So we get 9, and we are going to check that. Perfect. All right. So let's do another one of these guys. So now we're going to be given a new fu function rule. We need to make sure we're paying attention. Each time we do this, we're going to be given a new rule, a new equation. So here's my equation. I have y equals negative 6. And then x I'm going to put in red. That's the only reason I didn't write it. x. So that we remember, that's what we're replacing. That's our input. Okay. So I have y equals negative 6 plus 3. y equals negative 6 plus 3. Sorry, so I don't have to switch my colors each time. So for the first x, it's asking me to put in negative 5. So I'm going to go to times negative 5. And you can also use parentheses if you want, if that's a little nicer. You do, I don't want you to think we're subtracting 5. We're multiplying by negative 5. So sometimes this gets a little confused if you don't have the parentheses. Um, all right, negative 6 times negative 5. Two negatives make a positive. So 6 times 5 is 30 plus 3. So y equals 33 because 30 plus 3. So if I input negative 5, I get 33. For this next one, it's asking me to input negative 1. And again, if that confuses you, use the parentheses. Make sure you know you're multiplying these two numbers. So y equals negative 6 times negative 1. Again, two negatives make a positive. So it's going to be positive 6 plus 3. So 6 plus 3 gives me 9. If I input negative 1, I get 9. All right, let's see. Can I just erase these guys again nice and neatly? Mm, kind of, sort of. Erase my 6 just a little bit there, but that's okay. All right, so the, the next number they're asking me to put in here is 0. Well, why? Anything times 0 is 0. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. This is going to be 0 plus 3. And anything plus 3, this is an identity. Anything plus 0 is going to be itself. So if I put 0 in, that's my input, then I get 3 back out. All right, last one here, we're going to multiply by 1 because that's the last number they're asking me to put in. Y equals negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 plus 3. This is not going to be 9 this time. It's a negative and a positive. So if I'm looking at my, my number line here, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's negative 6. This is the negative direction. Here's the positive direction. It's asking me to add 3. I want to go to the positive direction. 1, 2, 3. So I, I land at negative 3. So just make sure you're paying attention to those integers and the direction you need to go. If they're opposites, you subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3, but 6 was a bigger number. I have more negative than positive, so that's why it ended up negative. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and check that guy. We have one more left to do here. So let's see. I'm going to go big eraser so that it lets me erase a little bit more. Okay, so this is a function rule table. So we're actually going to figure out what is happening for each one of these. So when, when they give us this um, table of values for a function, and they want us to write in, um, the output when the input is n. So that's kind of a funny way to say that. But n is a variable. So whatever we put into it to, to the input, what are we doing to get the output? That's what we're trying to figure out here. So if I want to go from 3 to 5, well, for this one, and I, I'm going to test addition and subtraction first to see if this works. If I add 2 to 3, I get to 5. So let's see if that works on the second one. If I add 2 to 7, I get to 9. Ooh, that works. 8 to 10, if I add 2, I get to 10. So each time, I'm adding 2. So n, if I add 2, I'll get my answer here. I'll know what it is. I can put any number I want in for n, and I know all I have to do is add 2 to get my output. So the, what they want you to type in here, though, is the actual n plus 2 on here. So that's our rule. If I have a variable or a number, I'm going to add, what did it do? Oh, it wants me to actually click that button, I guess. 
it didn't let me put the plus sign in there with the keypad. So I had to actually click the plus here to put it in. So you're, just, you're going through. Am I adding something to each number? Make sure it works for each one of the terms. Am I subtracting? Or am I multiplying to get from one to the other? Am I dividing to get from one to the other? So you're just trying to figure out how do I get from my input to my output. In this case, I believe it's always going to be just a single step. So it should be pretty simple. You should be able to figure out how to get from input to output with a single operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. All right, let's go ahead and check this guy. And unless it froze. Uh-oh, might have froze. Mm. Well, darn it, it froze. So it should be giving me a nice check mark here, but for some reason my computer froze again on this very last problem. But that was section five, and I will see you in section six.